Tonight at 10, we question police and the county attorney about recent unsolved violent crimes in Billings. Also, I'm Alina Howder. Here at Mount View Cemetery, the city of Billings is trying to preserve a little piece of history. We'll tell you more coming up. And crowds gather at the gates of Buckingham Palace to remember a much loved monarch. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. She was Britain's longest reigning monarch, spending seven decades on the throne. The death of Queen Elizabeth tops our news tonight. The queen was 96 years old, having worn the crown since way back in 1953. She steered the monarchy through decades of social change while remaining a symbol of national stability in a shifting world, as well as a beloved figure. Q2's David J is standing by with local reaction to the Queen's passing. Some in Billings have ties to England. We had a chance to talk with a former MSUB student athlete who recently moved back after graduating this past spring and also to a current student athlete here at Rocky. And for many, Queen Elizabeth II with her 70 year reign is the only monarch they've ever known. My mom was the first one that popped up and our family group chats in no way the Queen's just passed. Ethan McGuire is from Bolton, England. He's a sophomore at Rocky and plays on the men's soccer team. She's just like the kind of person that everyone, the head of everyone looks up to everyone, everyone looks up to her. Buckingham Palace, like where she lives, is the biggest place in England to go to if you go to London. Bradley Lowe's lives in Hexham, England. It's a very surreal kind of historic monumental moment for us Brits. For two years, Lowe's called the Magic City home attending college at MSU Billings and playing on the men's soccer team. It's a pretty sad day for Britain. Obviously, we're saying goodbye to the longest reigning monarch in British history. That's been a great servant to our country, regardless of politics. You know, she's kind of st stood the test of time and always dealt with um, issues and, and whatnot with a, a great amount of grace. Lowe's and McGuire say the entire country feels a loss. Public displays have popped up in small towns and cities across the country, and they say it's been more difficult for some of the older British citizens. My parents are more in shock, actually. I think they feel it a lot more because, again, they're of the age. They've known nothing but the Queen and setting the example for, for, for all of us and serving our country. The grandparents are taking it quite because it's been like some of them were there when she was very first appointed and now they've been there all the way to the end of it, so it's a big thing for them. And now they wait for Prince Charles. It's going to be different having a king instead of a queen. God save the king. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Billings continues to see more than its fair share of violent crime, including at least two homicides where no one's been charged. Tonight, Q2's Haley Monaco talks to police and the county attorney about why it's taking so long. Nearly three weeks ago, a man was shot and killed right here where I'm standing, and it was all caught on camera. Yet no arrests or charges have been made in that case, and many of you want to know why that is. It's video we've all seen by now, a road rage incident that quickly turned deadly. Our Q2 security cameras captured the shooting, but three weeks later, no suspect has been arrested or charged. We needed to have that timestamp removed, and we had a technological issue with uh, how that had to be removed. It's ultimately up to the Yellowstone County Attorney's Office to decide what charges should be filed, if any. County Attorney Scott Twido says investigators have to diligently rule out the possibility the shooter fired in self-defense before pursuing murder charges. But still, the question remains, why was the suspected shooter not immediately arrested? He stayed on scene, he waited for officers, was cooperative in the process. That all comes into play when we're making that decision, is an arrest going to be made on the spot or not? But that's not the only unsolved shooting in the Billings area. Just last month, a man was shot in front of several people on the Midway at Montana Fair. The Sheriff's Office says the case has been sent to the County Attorney's Office for review. Last January, 15-year-old Cohen Parker was shot and killed in the Billings Heights in front of several people. They ran into a lot of bar uh, barriers uh, with the group of individuals that were involved uh, and just a lack of general cooperation. Billings Police Lieutenant Matthew Lennox says having multiple witnesses can certainly help a case, but cautions it can also complicate and lengthen an investigation, especially if there are multiple accounts of what happened. We are working diligently to 
get to making a decision on that case. Law enforcement and the county attorney's office both say they're constantly working on these cases, working diligently to solve them. But this isn't a television show. This isn't it gets all wrapped up in you know an hour. You know, you've got to give us the time to do it correctly with the resources we have. Both departments are also currently facing staffing challenges from attorneys and prosecutors to the detectives themselves. But even with a full staff, it's not unusual for cases to take months and even years to investigate. Taking them very seriously and working diligently to uh, get those cases uh, to the point where a decision can be made. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Pretty busy on Doppler radar for tonight, especially we had showers and we had lightning around the Billings area in Yellowstone County. Some very heavy rain for you down in Sheridan County, Wyoming. Could that be a little bit of snow into the Bighorns? Perhaps. We're also looking at some heavier rain. Livingston so far showing 44 hundredths of an inch of precipitation. We'll get an official number for tomorrow. And Billings adding up around the quarter inch that we had earlier in the day. So areas of showers, heavier rain through southeastern Montana and northern Wyoming. And the temperatures, chilly. Right now, 36 degrees colder in Billings at the airport than it was at the same time yesterday. 32 degrees colder for you in Mile City. And you can see the rest of the readings. More weather coming up in a few minutes. Here at Mount View Cemetery, there's a mystery to be solved. Dozens of people are buried here without grave markers, and with the help of an MSUB history professor, the city is trying to identify where exactly these graves are located. At the largest and oldest continuously operated cemetery in the region, there's a lot of history just waiting to be unearthed. Mount View Cemetery is home to hundreds of marked graves, but there are many more people buried here. Exactly where is a mystery, but it's one now being solved. These people are literally invisible. They've been forgotten for uh, over 100 years at this point. They deserve to have their name recognized in the record. That's where MSU Billings history professor Thomas Rust comes in. He was contacted by City Parks and Rec last year with an unusual request. They had a number of uh, uh, areas that they would like explored here to see how many people and where they would be buried. His 2022 spring semester class accepted that challenge. They spent weeks combing this cemetery with ground penetrating radar, identifying dozens upon dozens of unmarked graves. This unit down here is a 500 megahertz ground penetrating radar and it sends uh, radio waves into the ground and when it reaches something um, hard it, it will send an image back to the receiver part of the um, to the unit. Rust compares it to mowing your yard. You just walk back and forth until the radio waves tell you there's something in the ground. Billings historian Lauren Hunley says many buried here were folks who couldn't afford proper burials. The city or the county would take over your burial and it would be as bare as you can get it. Wooden box, dig a hole, bury you. No service, no flowers, usually no marker. There were also at least three mass graves in the cemetery from the flu pandemic of 1819. We want to be able to identify one where the grave is because once we can identify that location, we can start to understand um, and start putting names to those people. A mission that Thomas Rust is determined to complete because he believes marking these graves are not only important from a historical standpoint, but from a moral one as well. It gives these people a certain level of dignity and respect to know where they are, even if we can't put a specific name to the individual, that at least we know that the, there's individuals there. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. The blood has been in short supply for years, but one Billings group is hoping that some cute faces might make a difference. Our Casey Conlon has more in tonight's Your Health Matters. A group of Billings moms know just how important blood can be. They're each mothers of children battling cancer and who have been helped immeasurably by blood transfusions. And since this month is National Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month, they figured it was their time to give back this crucial lifeline. I have never given blood in my life. I've just always been too busy. This is my reason, I'm going to do it. That reason is Ashley Voller's son, Tristan. He was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia one year and one day ago. To say it's been life-changing is not even touching the last year. But what Voller continues to come back to is the generosity of her community. People have shown up for us time and time again 
it has shown us to just be better. It's hard to tell that Lachlan Mraz was also diagnosed with ALL in February of 2021. Lost all of her hair, had to get eyebrows. <laughs> your eyebrows, um, had to get several units of blood and platelets, which is why what we're doing this month is so important. Leukemia is a blood cancer, so the most effective treatment is basically replacing infected blood cells with healthy ones. Throughout Tristan's last 12 months, he received seven different infusions of either blood or platelets. And it's pretty fair to say that without those, Tristan would not be here today. The improvement after a simple blood transfusion is huge. You can notice it pretty quickly? Absolutely. So the group, along with Vitalent, has started a virtual blood drive. Head to the link in this story on our website and you can pledge your donation either at Vitalent in Billings or at any other collection center in the world. It's badly needed. A lot of people don't even realize, even within their own community, how prevalent childhood cancer is. Um, and only 4% of the, the proceeds from any cancer research actually go to childhood cancer. So every pint makes a difference. <laughs> In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. The Yellowstone Art Museum connects Montanans with the past and the present through various art exhibitions. And this weekend, there's a chance to take a piece of the museum home. This is a place many people come to be inspired. Art can transport us around the world and across cultures. Museums like this, a portal to another place. But rarely can you bring art like this home with you. On Saturday, the Yellowstone Art Museum will allow you to do just that, auctioning off this entire exhibit currently on display. We will auction 24 works of art by 23 leading regional artists who have contributed this work to support the efforts of the museum to really help us fund all of the great educational outreach that happens here at the YAM. This group Thursday got a sneak peek of the exhibit. Noticing the various materials that the artist uses, you can see some three-dimensional elements. An exhibit featuring everything from this piece made of willow branches by artist Christine Joy with an estimated retail price of $4,400. not just like an object, like there's a story here that really like brings you back to it. All the way up to this oil and charcoal painting by Glendive artist Sean Chandler with an estimated retail price of $10,000. We've got three-dimensional pieces, photography, prints, paintings. It really feels like there's something for everybody. Everybody has connections here to the region and all folks who have really been celebrated for their work. We've had quite a bit of interest in all the pieces um, so far. A lot of people coming in, touring the exhibition in person and also having the artworks available online um, helps them reach you know, a wider demographic. So um, we've had a lot of interest in, in all of them. It's a chance to celebrate local art and help a good cause as the Yellowstone Art Museum hosts its first big public event since the pandemic began. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, a man on a mission to do something about the hundreds of orphan gas and oil wells in Montana. And later, West High trying to break into the wind column still this football season. The highlights coming up.